Well, thank you, Madam Chair. And I want to thank the uh, Chairman of the Committee, Senator Manchin, for his leadership and Ranking Member Barrasso as well. It sounds like they've been talking to my friends and family back in Kansas who would certainly agree with everything that they've said so far about this issue. Uh, Madam Secretary, welcome. At a real high level, when you are sitting down with your advisors, do, do you make it, is it the goal to make it as hard as possible to drill new oil wells, new gas leases on federal lands? And if that's not the case, when different policies are presented to you, does anyone say this will make it harder, this will make it easier for American oil to be drilled on federal lands? Senator, that um, the fact that things are harder or easier it never enters the conversation. Um, we are working hard to make sure that we have a balanced approach to our to our energy. So you're telling me that when you're having these discussions, they don't tell you whether this is going to make it harder or easier for access to uh, to, to new leases. Um, no. Okay. And is it, is it your goal, is it your hope that there is more or less drilling on federal lands while you're the uh, Secretary of the Interior? My goal is, as I mentioned, is to have a balanced approach to our public lands, to make sure that we are doing the best job possible for the American people, considering that the public lands belong to them. Does the affordability of energy, uh, the cost of gas at the gas pump, the cost of utilities ever figure into any of your decision-making process? Senator, I know exactly what it's like to be poor, quite frankly. And so, and so do I. I, 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 I do too, but does it ever enter into your, your policy making? I bring my, my whole self to the job. Okay. Your undersecretary mentioned panic a little bit ago. Let me tell you what panic is. Panic is $5 a gallon gasoline when you're a single mom with two children and you're pregnant and you don't have the gas money to get to your OB appointment. And they call me and say, I can't make it today, doctor. Can we just visit over the phone? Panic is when my son with, with two uh, children under the age of 15 months says, Dad, my utility bill doubled uh, this last month. Is there, a, is there a problem out there? That's what the panic is. I'm not sure what the panic you heard two years ago, but we didn't hear it in Kansas. I think your left liberal media uh, was, was, was digging up panic, but most of the country was not panicked then. This is panic. Today is panic. That's what's going on across this nation. I want to share with you what is creating the high price of oil right now. Okay, I hope that you realize that it takes a year or two for an investment to turn into oil that's going to actually go to, to the refinery. Whenever there's uncertainty, folks are not going to invest in a business. If I was going to write a book on business, uh, the first chapter would be about uncertainty. And the federal government specializes in uncertainty. And you're doing it with your policies. You offer us a lease, you pull it back. Uh, the, these checkered board leases that we talk about, it looks to me like you're purposely picking and choosing and make it very hard for which leases that you're going to offer. Then when these companies spend tens of millions of dollars to figure out, do we want to bid on that? Then you pull it away from them. And then the next uncertainty, if we buy the lease, can we get a permit to drill? And if we get a permit to drill, can we get a permit to get our pipelines out of there? So all this adds to the uncertainty, and that's what's driving up the price. The price of oil is reflective of what's going to be happening a year from now, not yesterday. That's why we have a decreased supply, and these companies are unwilling to go forward, because your policies are creating uncertainty. Do you understand how your policies are creating uncertainty for American businesses? Senator, thank you very much for... Um letting us know the frustration that you're feeling and the, your constituents are feeling, and we, we understand. And I just want to assure you that I am absolutely following the law. Um, and you don't and care it, about the uncertainty and the cost of, of what you're doing to dry things up. I'm, I'm going to turn the lesser prairie chicken really, really quickly. We've talked, we visited about this before, and uh, the department's considering listing the lesser prairie chicken. I would tell you, in my estimation, that it's never been better protected before, thanks to great help uh, between the government as well as the private sector. What do you think the financial impact will be on the cost of utilities in Kansas if you list the prairie chicken? 
Um, Senator, what I could say is that um, we always follow the science and the law on any any listing questions. Um, we recognize, and I just want to say that we really recognize the uh, value of the voluntary efforts to um, to this conservation effort, and um, uh, appreciate that we. But would would you agree with me that listing the prairie chicken will drive up the cost of utilities in Kansas? Senator, as I mentioned before, I'm, I am not an economist, so I couldn't answer uh, truthfully a question like that. Thank you. I yield back.